If you love this and you really want to do this, try it. You never know what can happen. I was told I couldn't do it. I was told I was too small. I was told that I, I wasn't this and I wasn't that. And, you know, I, don't listen to anybody. Listen to this. Like that whole rebel heart thing, that whole like heart and soul thing, that's real. Just listen to this right here. Hello, everybody. This is a very special stream for everybody. For me, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to dig into my crates of copious amounts of wrestling gear and uh, tell some stories and give you all a sneak peek behind the scenes of, you know, stories and concepts and things that you guys don't know yet about all this gear. Obviously, I want to be honest and open with you guys on this stream because I feel like that's what this is for. So I know that there is an elephant in the room that everyone is going to keep asking me about in the chat. So I will just talk about it right now. Um, obviously, the news yesterday, I posted on Twitter how, how much Regal affected my career. How I would not... I would have never been in NXT if it wasn't for Regal. That guy is a legend. So many times, even back in uh, when I was on the indies, uh, when I would come to work at PWG, Regal would come to the shows and he would watch from behind the curtain. He actually watched me versus Kevin Owens, and uh, that was one of the matches that helped get Kevin uh, his tryout. Uh, and then I remember talking to Regal after that match, and he said that I was still a little young, but wrestle a little bit more and then come back and then it'll be time. And it was because of Regal that so many independent wrestling guys um, who would have not gotten a chance if it wasn't for him got chances. So many people you watch on television right now, they had their job because of Regal. And the news that came out yesterday, like, flat out it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Um, you never want to see anyone lose their job, uh, especially a guy like that. And uh, I'm not even just talking about just him, but so many talented people that work there and I know everyone is going to be like, oh, you're gonna, you mi gonna miss NXT and things like that. And I do miss NXT, but the thing I'm gonna miss about it the most are not just the fans, but also the people behind the scenes because I had such a great relationship with everyone back there. And um, I tried to name as many people as possible. One, one group of people I blanked on that I named after the fact when I had a, uh, a speech to everyone in the locker room was the writing team. And uh, the writing team does not get the credit they deserve uh, Dave Kapoor was on that writing team and he is one of the nicest kindest guys in the world and uh, It was great to work with him, but Dave Kapoor Johnny Russo uh, Dewey Baker uh, George who also uh, Lost his job Gabe who also lost his job like so many people that are just so great. I don't work there currently um, But it makes me very sad uh, to see people that I consider friends lose their jobs because Not fun, <sighs> not a fun thing. But I will just say one more thing. The stuff I got to do with Regal, the backstages, whether it was the Cuckoo Bananas stuff or any of our backstages where we have 30 seconds or two minutes, it was such a pleasure to work with them. Like we have such a good relationship off screen. So it was really fun to be able to play around with them on screen. And uh, a lot of what you saw on screen was kind of, a lot of it was improv too. Uh, the Cuckoo Bananas thing, us going back and saying bananas, 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 bananas. All improv. Uh, he's just a pleasure to work with and such a gentleman. And like I said, he will never take credit for the impact he had on this generation of wrestling probably the last 10 years. But I want to give him that credit because he deserves his flowers. And he deserves them now because he's the best. How did I get involved in wrestling? Well, I, uh, I don't know if I've told this story on here. Um, but... Uh, so I was obviously a, a wrestling fan growing up. My dad owns a catering company and an independent promotion approached my dad and asked if they could run a show in his back parking lot. And my dad knew I was a wrestling fan, so he said, yes, of course, uh, as long as my son's allowed to get in the ring and play around a bit. And uh, so my dad, uh, they, he, had, he ran the show and I was able to get in the ring before the, the <laughs> show started. And again, very, it might've been a very unprofessional company, because they were also like, yeah, let, let your son and his friend have a match in front of the crowd. So me and my friend, eight years old, went out there, had a really horrible match because we didn't know what we were doing and we were untrained. Got a chance to go and wrestle in front of the people and 
I, my name, my wrestling name was Jag during that time period because John Anthony Gargano. I was very clever. My finishing move was the Jagged Rock. Uh, it was a perfect plex. In my head, I thought I hit like the most beautiful perfect plex, but looking back on it, it was like a little small package, so it wasn't good at all. <laughs> advice for someone interested in pursuing a career in wrestling. Any advice? Yes. My, my advice would be to find a good wrestling school in your hometown or wherever you live, or if you're willing to travel, uh, find a good wrestling school with a reputable place and um, put your all into it. Like, don't go into it with just like, one foot in. Go into it with everything you got. Uh, especially if you love it and you really want to do it, like give it your all. I, I promise you it's extremely worth it. And I'm sure people are going to tell you you can't do it and people are going to tell you you shouldn't do it. But if I, I am going to tell you that if you love this, I'm looking at the camera right now, if you love this and you really want to do this, try it. You never know what can happen. I was told I couldn't do it. I was told I was too small. I was told that I, I wasn't this and I wasn't that. And you know, I, don't listen to anybody. Listen to this. Like that whole rebel heart thing, that whole like heart and soul thing, that's real. Just listen to this right here. And the best advice I can give anyone, uh, because it's advice that I uh, give to everyone that asks, is don't lose that wrestling fan inside of you, because I have never lost that. I always think about whether I'm doing this, or if I'm doing meet and greets, or if I'm like walking and a fan comes up to me and asks me for, my, for a picture. I always just think like, if I was in their shoes and I saw one of my favorite wrestlers, what can I, what would make me lose my mind? So I just try to do that. Um, I just try to put smiles on people's faces. And, um, cause I, I don't view you guys as just fans. Anyone who calls someone a mark in 2022, I don't know, it's not, that's not a thing anymore. It shouldn't be a thing anymore. Like, we're all just people. And, uh, yeah, everyone just treat everyone with respect. This is what the people came to see. They came to hear the stories. They came to see it on camera. Uh, so, I guess if I'm going to start somewhere, I will start with my first takeover gear, uh, which is DIY gear. I have all of my takeover gear, by the way. I have not gotten rid of anything, and I have everything, so it's, it's sitting currently in the closet in what is going to be the baby's nursery. Uh, it wasn't the baby's nursery. It was the Star Wars room, but now it will be the baby's nursery slash Star Wars room. Uh, so my gear's all in there. It smells like leather in that closet, so he's going to love it. Uh, uh, so this is kind of my first takeover gear. And that's kind of like a lime green uh, tint to it. Again, this is this was uh, very basic. That first takeover gear was Takeover Brooklyn. It was DIY versus Revival. And then as the time went on, I started thinking about how I wanted to start doing kind of uh, superhero inspired gear. And the first one I did was Star Lord. It's got kind of a Star Wars theme, as you can see. I'll kind of get it closer to the camera so you guys can kind of see the the details here on it. This is my first takeover superhero inspired vest. It wasn't designed by anyone. I kind of just gave main event gear the idea. I sent them the Star Lord jacket and I said, just make me a vest version of this. Also, all my gear is made by main event gear. I will say that right now. Uh, you can see the tag on uh, the vest. Uh, yeah, so this was designed by them. This was before I started getting really intricate designs done, but they did an incredible job on this. Uh, this was the start of it all. This is me and Andrade from TakeOver Philadelphia, which people really seem to enjoy. Why always vests? I always just thought vests look cooler when I had a different character, when I, you know, uh, turned heel and started doing other things with the way and things like that. I started wearing jackets and different kind of vests, but I always love vests. I think this always, uh, fit everything really well, like it always fit the whole look that I was going for. Um, I will also show you guys something else. So my initial concept vest, that was based on a Hawkeye design. If you look up Hawkeye's vest from like Avengers, that was kind of the vibe I was going for. So this is that vest, kind of. Uh, so this vest is kind of the vest that I would wear all the time. Has my logo on the back. This is not the vest that I wore all the time. This is actually, as you can see, it has a WWE logo on it. This is a concept that WWE gave me. They were actually at one point going to sell these vests. I have the only one, <laughs> uh, but 
This was going to be for sale at some point. Uh, they were going to make these by on their own, and they were going to sell these vests. Uh, it never ended up happening, but that is uh, that is something that you guys can. No one knows. <laughs> but yeah, these were almost for sale, uh, and it would have been sweet, but it never ended up happening. This is one of my more popular ones, so we're gonna bust this one out now. This is the Wolverine gear. But yeah, so this gear is one of my favorites. Luckily, an action figure as well, kind of. Uh, they did not add the claw marks to the vest. I'm not sure why. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is one of my favorite sets of gear that I've had. It's one of my favorite looks. I also have the kick pads. Like all of this gear was designed with me and Adam Riches and main event gear. I purchased it all, I did everything. It was all just me, it was all my doing. <laughs> Of course, we have the gear itself, which is this with the, the classic, as you'll see when I do concepts and things like that. They also have the wrist wraps. So these are fun because these always, you know, on the wrist, and they go around, and there you go. And that was one thing that I was like surprised that they actually kept for the figure. Just curious, how much does the average piece of gear go by? They're expensive. <laughs> I wanted every takeover to feel special. That's why I only wore it once. A lot of these gears I only wore once. It was always very important to me that uh, whatever gear I was wearing made sense with the story I was going with. Star-Lord happened, like Wolverine, we were in Toronto and Wolverine's kind of a Canadian he is a Canadian, uh, so that's where it felt perfect to wear that in Toronto. Uh, and he's also a good guy, so or kind of a not as an anti-hero, but ish. Um, speaking of anti-heroes, uh, I will get to I'll go with Punisher next. This is my Punisher gear. You see, like main event gear obviously goes above and beyond, making texture and things like that. Uh, you can see the bullet holes in the chest and everything in general. A lot of the fonts are based on the comic book fonts for each character as well. See, is this as well? Over the new pads. Someone mentioned Jack Skellington gear. That is one of my later ones, but this is my Jack Skellington gear. Uh, if we're going out of the superhero range, when me and Candace did Jack and Sally uh, for TakeOver. This was a fun one as well. This was the, one of my favorite non-vest gears. Again, amazing attention to detail for everyone. This is main event gear. They designed this one as well. So this one is a less known one, but this was inspired by Thor Ragnarok. This was uh, for me and Tommaso in New Orleans. And the attention to detail on this one is amazing. We have the shoulder plate here with the logo on it, with scratch marks in it. Uh, the story about this one, so there's claw marks on the back armor. And that is supposed to symbolize Tommaso stabbing me in the back. So that's a really fun little Easter egg for everyone. Um, you can see as well, it has... Uh, Rebel Heart written on it, kind of in blood-ish. This one pops off like this. This one has kind of a chest piece there. That's a really fun one. Right here, part of this one as well, is this knee pad, and it says live or DIY. So that's another fun little thing for uh, this set of New Orleans gear. Captain Marvel gear is here as well. This was the match where I defended the title against Adam Cole in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We thought it was very important to be kind of a all natural, like good guy. And uh, Captain Marvel seemed to fit the bill at that point. Um, you got NXT across the chest. This is the other part of the Captain Marvel gear. One of my favorite things was be able to turn the winky face into other logos. I saw a lot of requests for the HBK gear. So the HBK gear, for me, is one of the ones where I saw and I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Uh, like, it, it was amazing. And that was a Davin Poe design. Uh, he does all New Day stuff as well. The HBK gear is nuts. Uh, <laughs> like, so we did like a HBK slash Magneto House of M slash House of Way uh, gear. So it was like a crossover. <laughs> this is for In Your House. So, one of my favorite Sean gears from In Your House looked like this. So they were able to actually recreate that for me. The wrist gauntlets from it. Again, little pieces of mirror over all of these. Um, I also had a headband that I wore. So I have all of my takeover gear. Um, the only person in the world that has a piece of my takeover gear 
is Shawn Michaels because for my last night in NXT, uh, I mean, I, I made him a shadow box filled with uh, pictures of us together. Um, me and him when we were when I was a kid and I saw him in a meet and greet and then pictures of me in that gear and I gave him uh, my headband from there and I wrote a nice message on it. And it was such a fun little thing to be able to dress like them. And th when they saw us, they lost their mind. They were like proud dads. Uh, they were like, oh, let me take a picture. Let me take a picture. And we're like, we're going to go and take actual professional pictures. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they were, it was so cool because we surprised them. They had no idea we were wearing that. They had no idea we were all wearing click inspired gear. So they were like taking pictures and sending it to Diesel and Razor and Kid. And it was just, I don't know, uh, like for to be able to do that for a guy that I looked up to my whole life. Um, I mean, uh, two guys. I mean, all, all of them, for that matter. They were the my favorite wrestlers when I was growing up. And to be able to do that for them and kind of uh, pay tribute to them in my gear form, it was just, they, they were very, very, very proud. And it was so cool to see. This is another piece of gear here. Is we got the Captain America gear. This is for Chicago in the street fight with Tommaso. This is kind of based on Captain America's look. Uh, the Nomad look from Infinity War. So I'll tell this story more when I was able to actually show the concept art. This is the only pair of gear where we kind of ran into a a problem copyright wise, I guess, because they really wanted to they wanted to make merch about on it. Uh, so and I, I say this, Marvel loves the fact that I do all the gear. Uh, they 100% support it. Like there's not gonna be any lawsuits or anything like that. They're all in on it. Uh, but like. WWE got kind of particular because they wanted to make shirts for the TakeOver Phoenix event. So this Dark Phoenix logo was not going to look like this. So we had to do a last minute change, uh, which I'll tell you guys more when we get into the concept art that I'm going to show you. So this is the Dark Phoenix gear. And this was the one that was kind of hard to come up with story-wise. So we had a lot of options. Uh, and I'll show you when we do the concept art. Um, but Adam really thought we should do Dark Phoenix because... Uh, this was me and Ricochet for the North American title, and this was kind of like I can like pull out the like drop Ricochet on his head on concrete and go full bad guy or whatever the heck. Uh, and like we felt like Dark Phoenix fit that story really well because she kind of realized that she should embrace her bad power <laughs> and become all powerful as the Dark Phoenix. I see here the logo is different on this again for other reasons. Again, you can look at the red. It's kind of like burnt a little bit. The red's kind of burnt because you know the Dark Phoenix is rising from the ashes. A lot of thought goes into this stuff. <laughs> Maybe too much. Uh, and then yeah, you have uh, the fire as well and the kick pads. If you don't know all my gear, this is the Cleveland Skyline. The Cleveland Skyline is on all of my gear that is like this. And then the Dark Phoenix gear. This is one of my favorites that we've done because like the city's on fire a bit. And we have this logo. And uh, get kind of the X-Men style font here. This is my Carnage gear from TakeOver Portland. Because we felt like Finn has a demon. So it was only appropriate to kind of have kind of a the, the, the Carnage symbiote go against the demon inside of Finn. The texture on this is insane. You can see it up close. This is all textured to kind of look like symbiote-ish. The symbiote kind of texture on it for the gear here as well. That's a cool, it's kind of based on the Maximum Carnage logo. Takeover Brooklyn gear, which again, I've shown on stream, but you can see it, it's kind of painted. So it looks like Symbiote. Venomized. Again, uh, the amount of detail like on the figure as well, it's pretty spot on. The next one is the Takeover New York Iron Man gear. You see cords hanging out of it. <laughs> Inside of it is a pocket with a remote and another pocket with a remote with an extra battery. <laughs> Just in case. Um, there is a heck of a story behind this gear. Oh, it does work. Oh, good. You can see it's kind of lit up a bit. The S one's not lit up because I didn't plug in the other battery. If I were to do that, that lights up. You can see there. And it also, you know, comes with a remote that I can change the colors. Main Event Gear was making this jacket a week before and it caught on fire. <laughs> they told me. And they had to, at the last minute, completely redo it, make it from scratch. As you can see, like, they had to use a different fabric. So this is not like normal fabric. This is not like leather because the leather caught on fire 
And then one of my favorite Easter eggs is the Candace cupcake on the back. She had no idea I was doing this. Uh, so it was it was cool to kind of do that as well. Um, but yeah, this is this gear holds a special place in my heart. We always wanted to do Iron Man, and we wanted to save it for a special occasion. And Takeover New York was that special occasion. So I was glad I was able to bust it out there. Other cool Easter eggs of that gear was I wanted to have... If you look at Shawn Michaels' gear from WrestleMania 12, he has this kind of fabric on it with the the gold and then the this kind of sparkly things. So I felt like that was my boyhood dream moment, so I kind of wanted to recreate that in gear form as well. So the Iron Man match versus Bret Hart. But I was also Iron Man, but I was also referencing the Iron Man match that he had with Bret uh, in this gear as well. Here's the trunks for that as well. Got the Iron Man font on the back. Knee pads for that as well. And then upon showing you all this, that brings me to this piece of gear, which is my last one. My last one obviously has tons of Easter eggs on it. Uh, as you can see, it is the same fabric, same content, like same like texture of all of my old gears because Main Event Gear kind of threw it all together which is awesome which is what I want them to do. Uh, it's a reference I'm going to show you guys now. So this is the gear that I wore at my first takeover and then this is my last. So I, the, the, the green is actually an easter egg to the last to my first takeover. So it was first and you know last. So uh, that was a, a great little Easter egg to have. And you have the Star Lord here, you have the the Wolverine here, you have the Iron Man here, you have the Spider Man and Venom here, you have the Captain America here, you have the Dark Phoenix here, you have the Punisher here. You also have the bolts were in reference to DIY, so there are DIY bolts on it. So you have the logo of the gear, which is the Cleveland Skyline, my base one, uh, and then the logo. To talk about the logo for a second. This idea came to me from the low-key Disney Plus series. How the low-key font for the series would always change. Each, you know, letter would change into a different version of Loki, I guess. Uh, so that's what this is based off of. But the J is based off my very first takeover gear with the Scratch Johnny Wrestling. Uh, Toronto, Toronto. Uh, you got the Star-Lord one there. You got Phoenix there. You got the Y is kind of like way-ish. You got the T is the Phoenix one. The A is based on New Orleans. The K is Vac uh, Venom and, and Spider-Man. The E is Iron Man. The O is the Carnage uh, gear. The V is also my base, Johnny Wrestling. The E is Punisher and the R is also uh, New Orleans. Davin Poe designed that and actually did such great work on it. Um, but yeah, like I said, so much thought and detail and time goes into all this and I'm very lucky to be surrounded by incredibly talented people that make me look so much cooler. Now that you guys have seen the gear as this huge mess is all over my my uh, room. This is my again this is my this is my future child's college tuition. So when you go back and watch this, this is what paid for your college son. Now that I've shown you guys all the gear, let's get into the concept art. As you can see here, this is Adam Rich's concept art. We kind of knew we were gonna do Wolverine, but we didn't know which version of Wolverine we're gonna do. As you can see, we have the yellow and blue. We have the brown and yellow. We have the brown and orange. I was always a big fan of X-Men, the animated series. So I wanted to go with the blue and yellow because uh, that was my favorite version of Wolverine. So the way the process works, just to explain the process to you guys. He obviously watched the show and we saw where the story was headed and uh, we would be like, okay, this is where the character is currently going. Maybe this character would fit. Um, and we, he would come up with a bunch of different concepts on a bunch of different characters, and he would throw the, his ideas at me. i throw my ideas back at him. He'd draw up some concept art like this, and uh, we would kind of look at it, and I'd say, oh, I like this, I don't like this. He likes this, he doesn't like this. Um, and we would kind of hone in on one. In this particular instance, I honed in on the blue and yellow and we kind of went from there. We obviously went with the blue and yellow. As you can see here, the logo on the knee pad is different than the one I ended up going with. I kind of wanted to go with a Toronto Raptors vibe, because uh, I felt like the claw marks 
with the claw marks through the face fit more. So you can see it's a little bit different, but this is the concept art we ended up going with. So the way that works is we, when we decide on a art we like, we send it to main event gear and they end up bringing it to life. Then you have the Captain Marvel one here, the concept art for that. That's pretty much exactly what we went with. You can see the color swatches up there. But yeah, that one's pretty spot on to what it ended up being. The lines in the kick pad are the Cleveland Skyline as well. So the Cleveland Skyline's on the front of my gear and it's also on the front of my kick pads. And then you have the Venom Brooklyn gear. So this one, as you can see, it's a little different. An idea we had was to potentially have a hood with kind of symbiote coming off it. And like, as you can see in the back, like how we could potentially do this. <laughs> You know, tentacles need to be rigid enough to hold their shape and stay upright. They also be pliable enough so they can be bent in different directions. As you can see here, like we kind of gave ideas on what the texture could look like. But yeah, so that was something that was thrown around. Yeah, we have the Carnage inspired gear here. The design is pretty much exactly what it would be, end up being, honestly. Here we have different concepts for what the Carnage gear could have been. These are different ideas that were thrown back and forth. Where the logos could be, the different style of symbiote. Some of them get really crazy. So if you look on four, it says Johnny Wrestling written in the teeth. So that was one that was played around with too. Okay, now we're getting to uh, TakeOver Phoenix. So that's what the TakeOver Phoenix, uh, Dark Phoenix gear was based on. Oh, Zaniac, you never noticed a nickname switch. Yep, so uh, for example, um, on this gear. Okay, so you can see. So there's a story behind this as well. I, didn't, I guess I should have told you when the concept art was up. So the Venomized logo is attacking the Johnny Wrestling name. Again, it's a lot of nerd stuff that everyone's gonna be like, this is stupid, like you wear superhero stupid gear. I mean, sure, but I'm a nerd, so let me just do my nerd stuff. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so the Johnny, the Venomized logo is, is attacking the Johnny Wrestling name. So I wore this, and uh, then the next gear I had would have been this for instance. So the next gear I wore then in that instance was Punisher and I became Johnny Takeover then. So that was the I was Johnny Takeover for War Games and I was Johnny Takeover for Phoenix and then I went back to Johnny Wrestling for uh, Takeover New York because the stories that we never really got to talk about or do because of due to Tommaso's injury was the whole idea that I me and Candace hatched a scheme to where we would pretend like Tommaso was pulling the strings and I was going along with everything he wanted me to do. But at the end of the day, like with me and the North American title, that was only to get Tommaso into a false sense of security as you saw with the Dusty Classic where he went to go attack me, but my knee was fine. Uh, and I wasn't, I was pretending the whole time. Uh, that was, you know, a very long term story that we didn't end up being able to fully tell due to Tommaso's injury, but, you know, things happen, and we made the best of it with TakeOver New York with me and Adam. Uh, obviously, me and uh, me and Tommaso take TakeOver New York would have been pretty wild. Me and Tommaso take over Tampa would have been wild too, but uh, who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to finish that story, uh, wherever that may be. But back to this. This is the X-Men Inspire logo for Dark Phoenix, and as you can see here, this is the gear we ended up going with. This is the logo we ended up going with. You see all the colors and whatnot, but this is the logo that was on the knee pad. This is one of my favorite logos that doesn't get enough love. So it's kind of like the Venomized on Fire Heart uh, for Dark Phoenix. It was one of my favorite gears that I wore in the Royal Rumble. I wore it for the North American Championship, one of my first singles title. So it was always very important to me to have. So this was the one where they were like, we want to make a logo that we can put on a t-shirt. But they felt like that logo was too close to the actual Dark Phoenix logo. So the logo on the chest, we, we were told that we had to change it like two weeks, maybe two weeks before. And I knew that this was an important night for me. So I needed this gear to be great. And I got really upset because then they told me I had to change it. It's the first time they told me I had to change my gear. Uh, so we had to change it to this logo. I obviously like this logo way better, uh, but they decided on this one because it didn't look like the Dark Phoenix at all. That's why people were like, which gear? What? Who is he? What is it? Is he the Dark Phoenix? Like, I don't know. Like, no one can figure it out uh, because, you know, it didn't look like this. Like, what we intended it to look like. But it ended up working out fine. They made a figure of this gear as well, just without... It was a basic, so it was just the, the lower half. But now we have the War Games gear, the concept art of that one. You see the bullet holes all over. Then you have 
the TakeOver New York gear here. This one pretty much exactly what it ended up looking like. The Candice Cupcake on the back there. The fun little Easter egg. And obviously the Iron Man WrestleMania 12 inspirations as well on it. The different variations on the Winky Face. So this was the, the discussion as well. What we wanted the Winky Face to look at. I think we ended up going with this one. After the TakeOver Phoenix debacle, we didn't want it to be... Did get told we needed to change it at the last minute. So we kind of played it a little bit more safe. And then we're going to get into the last gear and the art from Dab and Poe on this. All the art before this was from uh, Adam Riches. This was the culmination of all the takeovers from the past thrown into one. Uh, you got the Carnage logo there with a base logo there. Iron Man, Spidey Venom, uh, Star-Lord, the base Cleveland uh, Skyline for my brown gear, Wolverine gear, and the logo on the back. Then you have the kick pads as well. And you have the vest that I showed you guys on screen already. I think now we are going to get into some concept arts. This is Cable. This was a concept that we were gonna play around with. If I didn't do Dark Phoenix and Phoenix, I was playing around with doing Cable. If you know Cable from the Deadpool movies, he had a teddy bear. And then we had an idea for a minute that we could potentially do for, I think it might've been Phoenix, because I think we were on the fence about Phoenix a lot. A half good guy, half bad guy gear. And as you see here, we have half Fantastic Four, half Doctor Doom. So that was an idea that was thrown around. Then we also played around with Daredevil slash Kingpin. That was another one that was thrown around. And then here's Cable, a different version of Cable we were thinking about going with. So we almost did Captain Marvel slash a scroll. We always did half and half there. So we had the Captain Marvel one we always wanted to do. This is around the time that Captain Marvel actually came out. So it was also very topical at that time. So I almost did Green Goblin, I think around War Games in LA. Yeah, the pumpkin bomb with the wingy vase is pretty cool. And the scales on the knee pads and everything like that. Like, I'm a big Spider-Man the Animated Series guy, obviously. So, I believe that's it as far as graphics and things I have to show you guys. But, yeah, I was, I'm was i glad I was able to give you a little sneak behind the curtain there and show you all that goes into that and uh, show you some concepts and things that we never had a chance to do. Okay.